back again. I have to give away. Have to hurry again. Hope all he will make a day day about home. It's where we are. And then I stopped was okay with the hi. Have to give away. Who are the seven heads? Well, let's see. God was really smart about using this word right here because here are they. These people in the brown with the turquoise, those are just troops that are behind these generals. See, this this guy right here where I'm putting my hand over his face, that's Belisarius. And that's probably Mundo or one of his other guys with him. That could even be Procopius, who knows. Because he was the adjutant to Belisarius. But usually, it, you know, I don't know that Justinian even knew Procopius. So he could be the other general. There were two of them. I forget the other guy's name. Could be Justin, who's going to end up being emperor next. Because he, he was fighting for Justinian also. And then here's Justinian holding the ball of plenty with nothing in it. Okay, and I don't know why he's got this weird, oh, because his other arm is underneath his cape, and his other arm is holding up the ball with this arm. You know, this is all Byzantine iconography. Each one of these little elements in the picture really means something. And this guy in the back, I don't know who he is, but this guy right here is a priest, and this guy right here is a priest, and this guy is right here is a priest, and oh, look, one, two, three in the center. Four, five, six, seven. Seven guys. Now, Justinian considered his wife to be co emperor with him, and she ain't in this picture. That's not a girl. Well, yeah, and at this point, hi, hepta, kef, she dies. See how biting God is? The man is supposed to be the head of the woman in marriage. Okay, that's biblical. It doesn't mean he's supposed to, like, beat her up. But the reason why he's the head is because Adam listened to his wife instead of to God in Genesis 3. But the other reason why he's the head is that and I, I'm not a man, so I don't understand this exactly, but I've noticed it. When men get married, they really take their authority seriously as being a husband, but they end up being ruled by their wives. Okay? So, and, and that's love or, or something, something inherent to being a male when you're married. I'm not sure. If you're a male, you might understand it. I don't. But the point is, is that when a man loses his wife, no matter what the cause, it's like part of him is missing, even if they fought all the time they were married together, okay? And Justinian and Theodora seem to have been a couple that, that really meshed with each other. I don't know. But they, they, he didn't cheat on her. He wasn't one of those Roman emperors who had mistresses and all the rest of it, Okay? And as far as I can tell, although there's there's some argument to the contrary, um, but as far as I can tell, she didn't cheat on him either. Okay, and since she was reported, and there's really no 100% proof of this, since she was reported to be a courtesan who he met before he became emperor and married before he became emperor, she was his mistress first, um... She didn't. She didn't go with anybody else. Okay, so if they were close, she would have been one of the seven, and she was one of the seven here. But this is 548, and she dies of cancer, so she's not one of the seven. See, because it's like, hi, seven heads, seven mountains are okay. Well, one of, one of the seven heads that are living on the seven mountains is no longer her. And the idea of seven 
is this clever or what? God would know that this picture would end up being painted. These are generals on the right of Justinian. That's his right arm. And these are church. This, this guy in the back could be somebody else because he's depicted as being in the back. And in Byzantine iconography, that means he's subordinate but important. Okay. But these guys, and notice he he's on equal level with these guys, but then it starts going up higher. See? Byzantine iconography has a lot of meaning in it. All right, and you have to sort of know some of that stuff to understand this. These are all level. Notice, except for his crown, he's level with them and level with this guy. And then that's a priest higher, just a little bit higher. And then a little bit higher and a little bit higher. They're taller. It's not just the bent of the tapestry or picture. All right, they're higher. So that's a, a sort of subtle way of saying, you know, the church is higher than the ruler. Even though in Byzantine uh, doctrine about church, there is no church apart from this guy right here. That's Justinian himself. Okay. And Procopius said, well, he looks like the mission. He doesn't look anything like the mission. But he had a martinet quality about him that was like the mission, I suppose. And he wanted to unite all the empire under his particular brand of faith, which Domitian also wanted to do. And he persecuted Christians like Domitian also did, but it wasn't really Christians so much as Jews. Because they, they, in Domitian's day, they equated Christians and Jews. That's how John ends up on Patmos. And it wasn't Domitian who exiled him. Okay, it was somebody else that was in the very area that we're looking at here with, you know, in the Anatolia, which we now call Turkey. All right. So these are generals on level with him, except he's crowned. And, of course, he's got the halo meaning ordained by God. And then this guy is also on level. So it could be like Justin or one of his. That's the next thing I got to tell you. He's got seven nephews. Gibbon noted that. Famous historian Gibbon. So he's got seven nephews. This could be one of the nephews. All right, or, or I don't know who, but he's standing in the back, which means he's important but subordinate. And then these are all independent and a little bit higher in the eyes of God. See, this whole thing is being painted as supposed to be a divine prediction. But you'll notice it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one's holding a Bible, and one's holding the the Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox censor, and then here's the this probably the chief priest to this guy, and this is probably the patriarch of, of Constantinople. I don't have all the identities of who these people are, but you'll notice it's seven, okay? So, the seven heads Don't include Theodora. She's dead at the calf. So there are six others. Well, it could have been any of these guys in this picture. Because these are six other guys in addition to Justinian. There are six total left, though. All right, so maybe this guy is no longer part of it. Or maybe it's other people who are filled. But you see, the idea here is that he's got advisors who enable him to do his holy function. So if one of them's missing, somebody's going to come along or whatever. But seven, if we counted her as part of the seven, then, you know, it's six. And then maybe this guy is missing. And then he'll be replaced by somebody else. The seventh head is going to be replaced, but he's not going to marry again. All right? So the idea that that picture denoted was there are seven, as it were, key persons in authority with him. So he's the seventh, okay, or he's the first, and it's the other six, but it doesn't include her now, all right? And why you know that for sure besides the picture, which was very handy that it had seven in it, seven mountains. Again, the seven mountains of Italy used to be, but are not at the time that this is highlighted. 
used to be where the elites lived, the founders, the most the patricians, the most important people, the people who were anybody, the people who counted. Okay? That same thing is true in Constantinople at this time. All right, because the seven hills were literally recreated by Constantine. And so the people who were the elites would be living on those seven hills. Okay, Constantine, I mean, here, uh, Justinian himself being one of them. All right, so the seven heads are living on seven hills because they're elites, and they are. Now, the reason that that's important to say is because there's so much wasted speculation on who the seven heads are of the seven mountains. And if you're in the seven mountains doctrine of Christianity right now, you should be aware that the whore is sitting on all of them. And it's a whore. It's calling her a woman here. That's a little nicer, but that's only because it's a one syllable short. So he can get to where he wants to get to at 567 so that he has his little seven appendage so he's reconciling time to pre-church expectation of the accounting for the millennium all right so who are the seven well it could be the guys in that picture I showed you it isn't the wife because she's dead here and she's not depicted there either which is unusual because he made a big stink about her being co-equal with him Okay, and they live on the seven hills. So what does this mean? This means the advisors around Justinian, his head people, whoever they are, that's who's in view. The seven heads on are seven hills. Yeah, they dominate their families. They're the heads of their clans on those hills. They're the seat of political power. They're the heads, meaning the head always has a connotation of authority, so it's political. Authority and power, but it could be authority without power. Elite, because seven hills. And it's definitely Rome, and they called themselves New Rome then. Okay? Except we call it Istanbul today. And it wasn't Rome, Italy, because whoever was living on those seven hills wasn't top tier elite because the top tier elite moved to Ravenna and we're in Ravenna during this time sort of like being replaced by the Goths anyway or you know playing to it because the Goth war um, isn't quite over yet it's Eisenhora it ends like right here and you can argue maybe it ends a little bit earlier Okay, it's it's sort of debatable when finally they beat in Italy um, the Goths, but no, but the the patricians weren't living there anymore. They were living in Ravenna. They weren't living in Rome. Rome was more of a seat for religious people, and that tended to be the lower classes. So if you're a patrician, you're you really tended to really think more like a pagan, and you went and moved to Ravenna. Why not? You got money. It's cleaner, it's nicer, it's more fortified, it's more protected against raids. Go move there. So the Kefali in Italy were not in Rome. So they were not in those seven hills. They probably occupied another seven hills if they made it seven hills in Ravenna, but they're not in Rome. So this is talking about New Rome, a.k.a. Constantinople, a.k.a. where Justinian is, where... Justinian sits and that's his last year that he sits because in this year is the year he dies of course it's at the end of the year he dies but he was sitting in see where the whore Justinian is the head of the church sits so when you want to start talking about well who are the seven heads well we got a picture they are people who are living on the seven mountains, they're among the elites. They're the heads among the elites. In one place. Constantinople. Okay? So, you know, there's others talk about seven and kings that's coming up. But it's not referring to the same thing. 
what the angel keeps on doing is he keeps using hepta partly because it's prophecy. Prophecy is a type of promise about what things are going to be. <coughs> promise can be good or bad. So this is another seven, as we find out, because only one of them is alive. Okay, and I'm going to cut this off because i got to go get some water. <coughs>